Good afternoon, I'm Sandra Reyes. Welcome to this webinar of the FRIDA 2023 call. We'll have, we'll make a presentation by Alicia Sukita, who is a project coordinator for research and LACNIC before giving the floor to Alicia. And for those who are participating in a webinar for the first time, let me give you some details so you can make the most of this presentation. We'll have about 60 minutes for this webinar. You may, may ask as many questions as you wish in the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We'll also have the support of Clara Cremona, who is a project assistant at SLACNIC, who will be answering questions on the FRIDA call. And because this webinar will be held in Spanish, we have simultaneous interpretation into three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. This webinar is will be recorded, and in the coming days, you will have access to the recording on LACNIC's website in the section on webinars. That is all on my behalf. Thank you very much for your attention. Alicia, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Sandra. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session. On our behalf, we'll be participating, as Sandra explained at the beginning, we'll be having Clara Cremona, my colleague in the cooperation section, who will be also answering some of the questions that might arise during this webinar. The purpose of organizing this presentation and opening the floor for questions is to explain some aspects that we normally don't include in the presentations when we make the call for Frida. And this initial stage, as you know, this it's, it's still open. And we'll also want to explain with what occurs with the projects that are shortlisted. And then after that, we will make some recommendations regarding the process. So feel free to ask any questions. And for reasons of time, those questions that we cannot answer during the session will be answered by, uh, through the e uh, through Frida's email. So specifically, FRIDA, as you are aware, is a program to support projects, initiatives, and solutions to strengthen the internet in the region. It is organized and coordinated by LACNIC. It consists of an annual and open call for proposals. And this is under the guidance of an external jury made up of regional experts in the following categories and thematic areas. This year, the members of the jury are Andres Lombana Bermudez, Antonio Moreiras, Carolina Aguirre, Ilan Melendez, and Mauricio Oviedo. Frida has, was created 19 years ago, and over this period, it has evolved, the, and also in response through its thematic axis to the challenges and the development of the challenges regarding the development of the internet in the region over this period of time. We have supported 122 projects in the form of grants, as well as scaling up of the projects in order to carry out further stages of these projects. 47 awards were made of initiatives and solutions, and this is at regional level. FRIDA has two types of modalities. We have the grants that seek to provide funding up to 30,000 US dollars, as well as technical support and follow-up of the projects, which is also very important for the shortlisted organizations. And this is focused on projects that have a maximum duration of 12 months. At the same time, we have the awards that seek to distinguish and highlight those projects, initiatives, or solutions that 
have specific evidence of an impact and results. These are the, those that are both concluded or in progress. This award consists of 10,000 US dollars. The beneficiaries of the programs uh, include several categories. This is addressed at actors of the technical communities, community, for example, operators, ISPs, NOGs. It is also focused in the academia in general, such as universities, research centers, or task forces or experts groups. It can also include associations, cooperatives, nonprofit organizations, and other stakeholders of the civil society, public agencies or government agencies, as well as private agencies, uh, companies, or enterprises. This call, this annual call, is divided into three thematic categories with a specific objective. It is also, the purpose is to submit in a more systematic way the specific objectives and the specific topics of each call. In general, the thematic areas tend to be similar over the years. We have internet stability and security. This seeks to promote stability and security of the internet through four axes and a subcategory related to the use and application of blockchain technology for internet security and stability. A second category is internet connectivity and access that seeks to favor three aspects and support projects related to projects to favor connectivity on one hand, and also to increase or improve the quality of access to the internet in those areas where this is already available, or also to support the service, internet service providers at regional level. And the third category is open and free internet, where it is expected that projects are submitted to deal with current challenges in Latin America and the Caribbean related to the internet and human rights, as well as digital inclusion at regional level, which are the two thematic axes within this category. And regarding the thematic axes, which as I mentioned earlier, are more specific, and have a very specific objective and also specific topics. And this is something that has to be considered when submitting proposal. These are the following. In the case of stability and security, we have network architecture and operation, traffic engineering and interconnection, cryptography, security and resilience, and future development of the internet. So each of these has a specific objective as, and also some specific topics of interest I mentioned. Regarding connectivity and access, we have connectivity to internet focused on those proposals that seek to provide connectivity to zones or rural and urban areas that don't have such an infrastructure. There's a strong focus on alternate access modalities and also innovating in solutions to provide connectivity to those regions that don't have this. Then we have access to the internet to provide quality service. As I mentioned initially, this is focused on solutions and proposals that seek to enhance already existing connections in some areas or also to benefit a certain population. In this case, these proposals could be focused on increasing access speed or other solutions that might determine 
that this is necessary when considering the specific context to which this would be addressed. And thirdly, the strategies to enhance the ISPs, and this is quite broad in its sense. First of all, it seeks to generate proposals and projects that are focused on the challenges that ISPs might have regionally. This could include the infrastructure itself or generating capacity building options or generating business strategies, provided this is set in a specific proposal. And then the third column is open and free internet. This includes two sub areas, internet and human rights and digital inclusion. In the first case, this could be proposals in those areas that seek to deal with the topics related to the internet and human rights. For example, freedom of expression, the use of data and privacy, the role of emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and the impact that this has on human rights. And finally, digital inclusion regarding challenges related to the digital divide in its multi-dimensional and broader sense. This could include projects that deal with projects regarding the skills for the future of work and education, as well as others related to the connectivity gaps or the digital divides. And finally, there's a subcategory that has to do with internet stability and security. As I said, this has to do with the use and application of blockchain in this context. In this specific context, this addresses research projects, case uses, and or development of proofs of concept and or prototypes, provided this has practical objectives and results that contribute to generating a solution to a problem and or to generate knowledge. So this is a subcategory that was introduced in the call for proposals in FRIDA 2022. And this, as I said, could include case studies proof of concept and prototypes. Regarding general requirements for proposals, these on one hand in the FRIDA call since 2022 includes the following, the general proposals related to the eligibility of the submitted proposals and on the other hand the assessment criteria related to the assessment of the proposals by the jury. In this case the general requirements are the relations with uh, the objective or the goal of uh, the program FRIDA strengthening the internet and improving the internet uh, regionally, thus contributing to a global uh, open and uh, secure internet, belonging to one of the categories of beneficiaries that we saw are very broad. So, so in that case, uh, there's a possibility to present joint proposals with uh, members of different categories and different uh, organizations uh, that apply. Third, um, re, uh, um, uh, being settled and developing activities in Latin America, the Caribbean, specifically in the territories of um, the coverage area of LACNIC, there are 33. And in this case, it is important for the proposal to focus on either a local, national, or regional context, but within those territories. So this information too about the specific uh, zones it can be found both uh, in uh, the 
uh, site of Lagnik as well as in the specifications of the call this year. Then among the requirements, one of the aspects that is considered, as we'll see now, the application to one of the thematic categories in the relation with one of the thematic access and subcategory for the case of stability and security, specifically for the description that, as I mentioned, it is something that uh, 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 is intended to guide the participants. It's important to have a relationship between the, the goals of each thematic category and each axis with um, the initial uh, proposal, since it is also an aspect that will be assessed and scored. And finally, the relation with specific requirements in terms of duration, funding, and open and uh, development. This is for the case of grants. We saw that you can ask for even for up to $30,000 and the projects may last up to 12 months. In the case of awards, the limits or the limit in this case is that the projects must be either underway or have been completed and the free and open development is something that we will discuss more in depth because it is something there, there are different uh, uh, questions that have been asked so we're going to discuss it later now let's talk about some general characteristics of uh, the application both uh, in this initial uh, um, case that we are now there's a possibility of applying for for more than one project in the same or in different thematic categories, the opportunity to apply in uh, the modalities of grants, awards, or both. This is something that happens. The categories and the broad categories and broad thematic access of uh, the call, but with um, uh, specific objectives and descriptions that are important to consider. Now, some general considerations that we thought would be important to mention. On the one hand, it is important to describe the categories and the subcategories. This is something that specifically in the case of, uh, it is specifically important in the case of connectivity and uh, access to the internet and in the case of open and uh, free internet. Second, selecting the thematic access that may associate with a project, identifying the type of support that is appropriate, whether it's a grant or an award uh, or a prize, depending on the characteristics of the different modalities. And from a more administrative level, accessing the platform Frida for applications. This is the link, but you can also access through programafrida.net where you will have all the information Re are registering with a new user or with uh, the ones that you already have and finally completing the form filling in the fields in this initial stage the application is uh, the maximum is 1350 words with answering specific questions based on four macro criteria of assessment as a guideline for the applicants. So as I mentioned initially, the call is directly, the, the application is directly related with the, the evaluation and the evaluation criteria are the ones that inform the, uh, the form and the questions. So we thought in this case that it was interesting to tell you in the case of the assessment or the evaluation, there are two stages. In this initial stage, and once the application is closed, we conduct an internal screening to determine whether the, the proposal complies with the general requirements or not. That is with the relation with the, the goal of uh, the program, Frida, 
belonging to one of the categories of beneficiaries, as well as being settled in the territories of coverage of LACNIC and a proposal focused on them, those territories. And then the jury's evaluation. Once uh, the first stage of initial application closes on May 31st, then we decide whether the proposal uh, meets the uh, criteria, the specified criteria. As you know, based on previous calls, those criteria are uh, relevance and applicability, impact and expected uh, outcomes, and continuity, sustainability, and replicability. The projects that are pre-selected go to a second stage where here we go to a phase where they are evaluated in a quantitative manner and more deeply because here you have the complete appli application. So in the case of relevance and applicability, this uh, has a way of 35% uh, of, of the total impact and outcomes of 40% and continuity, sustainability and replicability 25%. On the other hand, we also have the second order criteria that are valued positively, that are on the one hand, the innovative uh, nature of the proposal, inclusion of gender perspective, associ association to sustainable development goals. Now, let's discuss the application itself. First of all, at this current stage that is open, that was started on last uh, April 26th and is open until May the 31st, we have a simplified application, as I was telling you, through Frida's uh, application platform. So you are going to find a form, general data of the organizations that apply with a project, the people that uh, are part of those organizations that are going to engage in the project, the person in charge of the project, as well as general issues such as country data, among others. So on the other hand, the title of the proposal with uh, 25 words, a brief summary of the project, not more than 500 words, and then specific fields that are related to evaluation criteria. And in this case, this must be done in not more than 850 words. And more specifically, You will be asked about the relevance and applicability of the proposal based on a number of items that are included there. And this must be explained in not more than 250 words, impact and expected or obtained outcomes. We mentioned obtained in the case of uh, the awards or the proposals that are applying for uh, awards or prizes and are completed. So in those cases, you see the evidence of the impact. And here also not more than 250 words and then continuity, applicability, and replicability also with uh, um, a top number of words of 250. As to the second order criteria that are marked positively, the maximum here is 100 words, but in 100 words, we you should briefly discuss how the project in includes the gender perspective, what, uh, why the proposal is uh, innovative, and selecting the objective of sustainable goal that must be majorly related with the topic of the project. On the other hand, in the next stage, as uh, I mentioned earlier, when I talked about uh, the evaluation, those uh, projects that are pre-selected are invited to apply with a com the complete project through the same platform and in not more than two weeks uh, after announcing uh, 
and uh, getting in touch with uh, the pre-selected uh, projects. The dates for this are from June 30th to July 14th. And here, those pre-selected projects will, uh, you, there will, you will have a longer and more articulated form with a total of 15,000 words, including the fields that are not mandatory. And with the fact that in the form, in the complete form, you are requested a planned budget for the proposal. This is in stage two, as I mentioned. And in the current uh, stage, the uh, application is very simple and you are not requested to give a budget. At present, the application has the words we just mentioned. Now, going back to this second stage of those projects that have been shortlisted and that have to present, submit the full application. Just as an example, let me tell you how the entire submission process uh, can, uh, evolves. And for those of you who will be submitting for the first time, let me explain the following. First of all, you have the request to describe the project or initiative, the topic to approach, as well as the objectives, maximum 2,000 words. In addition to that, this would also have to do with the assessment criteria, for example, relevance and applicability, maximum 5,000 words, 1,000 words in each field. As I mentioned earlier, this is related to some items. So, and this is also mentioned in the initial application. We do not expect that the projects state when submitting this proposal to include all these items, but these are included as a guideline. So firstly, the challenges and needs for the region, how the project is related to this and how it tackles some of the challenges. And then if this implies uh, advancing in the status of knowledge or in the category that was selected, thirdly, to explain the objectives, the methodology, and the proposed activities, to state the foreseen activities in chronological order, and if necessary, to explain the technical team. At the same time, regarding the impact and expected results, at this stage, when presenting the application. This, for those who then submit the full application, this will include 4,000 words, 1,000 for each of the items. For example, the geographical area and the population benefited and or covered in the scope. This can explain how the project is associated to this what geographical area is associated to the project, the population that potentially might be benefited from this. Secondly, the technical developments in terms of results, hardware, software, prototypes or others, and material results. Then how the provided services will be improved or enhanced. For example, access to the internet for quality service, then knowledge development at practical or academic level, such as guidelines, methodologies, papers, publications that will be made as a result of this or presentations and conferences. And Thirdly, there are some specific fields related to the third criterion, which is continuity, replicability, and sustainability. Once again, this is for the second stage for those projects that were shortlisted. This will include an open field 
maximum 3,000 words, 1,000 for each item, namely continuity of the project, use and application of the results in other contexts or geographical areas, or populations other than those included in the objective in the region. And thirdly, if there were partnerships with other agencies that were generated and or divergent, then the uh, other specific criteria of a second order, which is 1,500 words, 500 in each item, and finally, a detailed budget. Then we have frequent questions and recommendations that we have identified, in addition to what is published in the FIDA website. A general recommendation is to advance in formulating the entire proposal after the close, uh, after this current stage finishes. So 15 days elapse before these are announced. In some cases, some articulations require articulation with other agencies, for example, when a proposal is made from different organizations. And in many cases, they need to have several weeks to submit the presentation. So a general consideration is to consider the descriptions for each item because they seek to serve as a guide in the application process. So this can also be applied to the assessment criteria. They specifically seek to serve as a guide. And to consider that not every field should be completed. And another element, which is also relevant, is to explore in Frida's website, programafrida.net, which were the proposals and projects that are in progress. Currently, eight have been selected in the previous call. And there you will be able to see general information, such as the objectives, the proposed activities, things related to the organizations, as well as the recommendation of organizing this with projects from the past two years. Regarding the budget, we have received several queries regarding what items should be included. In this initial stage, you don't need to submit a budget, but this is something that is asked regarding those items that Frida might cover. For example, non-refundable support. These are like subsidies or grants. This does not apply to the awards. This is for the grants. These are the different items to include the salaries of the team, professional services, such as the consultants fees, technical support that might be required, materials and equipment, communications, travel and per diem for the beneficiaries of the project or for the working teams and capacity building among others. As I mentioned when I started regarding the requirement on open and free development, we have been asked about this point and we included it in this presentation because all the developments done within the framework of the project, everything that is done within the framework that it is an funded by FRIDA and where there's an agreement for this grant, all these should be freely accessible and licensed under 
Creative Commons. This is a specific license. This license implies that in all cases, the authorship of the results should be assigned to the organizations, to the experts and members who participated in the project. So the authors are not from FRIDA, but of the organizations that worked on the project. And this license also implies that once the project is finished, if this knowledge or materials or the results are then expanded or modified, this orig the original authors should be mentioned and also should use the same license. So for example, the license of Creative Commons could not be used with commercial aims. In the case of software and hardware developments created by the awardees should be open source and open hardware. And if a specific situation were to should arise in the case of an organization, this would be analyzed by the cooperation team with the corresponding legal support. This is, for example, for those academic organization or universities that have specific regulations regarding intellectual property rights and that require specific analysis of this situation. Regarding the different dates, this a call was opened on April the 26th. The deadline for the initial submission is May 31st. The announcement of the shortlisted projects is June the 30th. That is why I mentioned the importance of taking these dates into account for the purpose of carrying out articulations. The submission of the full proposals will be between June the 30th and July 14th, and the results will be finalized and announced on the 15th of June. And to finish, let me mention that this year, we included the non-financial technical support that seeks to provide opportunities to six or eight projects that obtain the highest ranking the highest scores to be located right after those that were shortlisted. So the idea is to tackle some of the needs that were identified by the organizations that submitted proposals and that were not selected in previous years. For example, generating partnerships and collaboration with other organizations, exchanging experiences, results, and knowledge, identifying spaces, partners, and access to training opportunities. So all these activities will be developed over a six month period starting September this year. Of course, once the entire selection process has finished, and after the announcement of the projects that will receive funding, funding have been announced. Any questions, please write to Frida at lacnic.net and we invite you to visit the website programafrida.net. Thank you very much. And I give the floor to Clara so we can answer questions. Hello, thank you very much, Ale. Good afternoon, everyone. We have some questions in the Q&A box. I will now read the questions. First of all, we have a question from an anonymous participant. Two questions. If a pre-selected project in the previous call, can this be submitted again to access this new modality? 
And the second question is in the second form regarding the budget, the topic of the three members of the personnel and who pays the salary, who can you please clarify? So, thank you for the questions. In the first case, indeed, there are no problems for a pre-selected organization in the previous uh, uh, call may may again apply with the same project uh, that uh, was uh, uh, submitted the previous year. As we said, uh, Frida is a highly competitive call. It suffices to know that in the last uh, three years, there were 923 uh, proposals and 42 uh, projects were presented. So the projects which are submitted are typically of high technical quality. In the second case, as to the budget, you may incorporate as long as in the budget you request uh, specifically in each of those items, for instance, uh, in salaries, you uh, you can enter both uh, the uh, what is requested uh, by Frida and what will be contributed with the organization that is proposing it or by other uh, partners. And that is the, the same applies to each item. Thank you, Ali. Now, so that question was answered. We have a question by Henry Godoy, who's asking whether the same university may present several projects. So as Alicia just said earlier, the same university may indeed present several projects and in different categories or under different modalities of support. So, th so that uh, has been answered. And then uh, we have a question by an anonymous attendee who's asking whether an ISP that is part uh, of uh, the uh, a government portfolio may participate. In our case, he says it's called PACO SA. Well, let me give the floor to Alessia. Yes, indeed, you can participate in the category of beneficiaries. As a matter of fact, um, in the technical community specifically, they, they mention the ISPs and on the other hand, there is a specific access that is centered in ISPs at a regional level. So, yes, you can participate. So we have three questions by Marina Sidi. The first is the forms templates are the same each year. Are there any variations? And about this, the forms have been updated. They've been updated based on the needs of the call this year. And last year, some updates were also done uh, with the adjustments that contemplate the needs of each call. And there's another question that said, is it recommendable to present the same project for more than one category, changing the access or based on the expected uh, impact or the outcomes? Well, actually, the thematic categories are quite different. They have quite a different focus. So that is why we really insist in analyzing the specific description of each, what is the aim of each thematic category, what is the uh, access that is associated, except for very specific cases, as was mentioned in connectivity and access to the internet, or maybe in some case in open and uh, free internet, it is difficult to present the same project formulated in exactly the same manner to under several thematic uh, access. In addition, because it should adjust specifically to the general goal and the specific goals um, as well. And the results, the outcomes should be associated with the uh, intended impact. Uh, it should uh, 
uh, fit meet uh, the specific characteristics of that axis. I hope I answered your question. And the last question by Marina Siri is, to what extent does, does the public-private uh, partnership uh, and the distribution of the bu budget uh, weight? That is with respect to co-funding. Yes, co-funding is one of the aspects that is uh, are considered generating partnerships. And the fact that in the um, sustainability of the proposal, with the fact that there are ad ad additional funds, specific ideas and partners by the organization that contributes with the funds or by third parties. Okay, so then there's another question by an anonymous attendee ask whether a network can present can apply if they are not formally created could we do it through a formal organization um that uh, presents us so well this information is also included in our website in uh, the frequent uh, frequent questions and as we point out there you don't need to be legally created or to be a legal person. However, the organizations that are not must have um, sound history of work. And to receive the support of Frida, we need to pay through the uh, um, organization with a legal, uh, that is a legal entity. So I hope that that is clear. Uh, let me continue. Then we have a question by Catalina Villamarín um, uh, from Macaya, who's asking about the salaries of the team. It's only to people. Is it only for people that are 100% uh, working for the project, or could it also um, be uh, used for institutional support uh, of uh, the staff of the organization that coordinates the, the project. Yes, as a matter of fact, it could be incorporated as technical staff that is devoted to the project. So yes, it is possible. All right. Catalina is also asking, those 12 months of duration of the project are counted um, starting when? In other, in other words, what's the deadline for the beginning of the execution of the project? So let me answer this. Once the projects are selected, uh, Alicia published uh, the date uh, of when uh, we give the names of uh, the projects that will be funded. If I'm not wrong, it's August 15, and we start with the process of request of documents that are requested to analyze internally. And we start with the firms, with the signatures, and the projects will be started around September or October. We try to move forward as quick as possible with this procedure, but it usually takes a few weeks. So the starting date or to, to execute the project must be considered starting in September, October. I don't know, Alicia, if you want to add anything else or whether it, it's clear. Yes, I think that it is clear. In many cases, well, it's always going to be the beginning of the, execu the execution. We'll have to start this year. There have been, of course, uh, the signature of the agreements and signing the agreements and sometimes because of internal issues of the beneficiary institutions that we try to uh, respond to. This process usually tends to take at least one month more. So, as Clara was saying, by October, November, we should start the execution. We should have all the administrative part uh, solved so as to begin the project. Thank you, Ali. 
Well, we have some more questions, but I think that there are three more. Martin Fulgueiras says, hello, I work in reducing the digital divide, but as an independent professional, I'm not part of a civil association. Can I apply alone or is it better to form a partnership with another association? Well, as a matter of fact, it is a requirement. Either associating, you can't present uh, in the freedom. Uh, we, we, are, we don't work with uh, individuals alone, but it could be a group of experts under a university or a university foundation, for instance, that may manage the funds and uh, the organization that supports that group. This is just to give you an idea of how one individual or two individuals might apply to the call. Perfect. We have a question by Francisco Montes de Oca. To apply with um, a project of a um, digital uh, training, uh, education and inclusion, what is minimum time for it to be implemented? Or direct, for how long should it be? Well, the idea is that the project may start well, depending on the modality that you apply, whether you apply grants, the project will start, as we were saying, in October or November as the latest this year. However, if you apply for the, for the prize, the project may be completed already or it may be underway. I don't know whether it's clear. So depending a bit on the support that is requested. Finally, we have a question. No, it's not. A, uh, there's a question by Makaya. Is there a counterpart requirement? The, well, there is a specific, there is a, specific requirement of a counterpart. And we have the last question by Saya. Can Ecuador apply to this call? And the uh, and the answer is yes. Ecuador is uh, uh, contemplated in uh, the area of coverage of LACNIC. We have no more questions in uh, the Q&A panel, but if there are any additional questions that you may send, you can write to Frida at lacnic.net. And as Ale said just a few minutes ago, you may contact us, write to us, and we can answer all your questions. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. No, specifically only to tell you uh, if you have any specific questions about how to put together the proposal and who it could be associated to, under what uh, thematic access to apply, please get in touch with us because that's a typical kind of questions that we answer and not always is it so simple to uh, um, develop the project and define that initial phase. So we are available. We, we can help you with that. Okay, so it's time. We have a last question. Let me see if we can answer it quickly. Can 
can an organization apply for a, a grant and a prize at the same time? Yes, the answer is yes. You can apply to both things. There's no problem. And now, yes, I think that that was the last question and uh, it's uh, already three o'clock. So we, we don't want to take more of your time. Thank you. Thank you, Clara and Alicia, for uh, your um, assistance. And uh, thank you all, everybody, for your questions. We expect to see you in the next webinar. Hello. Bye. Thank you, everybody.